Hey guys, how are you? Steph here. So you got this huge web development project you got to create. Something huge, something bigger than you've ever done before. How do you approach it? This is a question I got for somebody. I'm going to give you some strategies here to help you. If you're new to web development or any type of development project, any type of business. So the key strategy is to first subdivide the project into smaller chunks, smaller components. This is going to make it easier for you to handle the big picture. What happens when you have a huge project and you get this, I don't know, this overload because you got, oh my God, we got all these features, we got all these things we got to do, it becomes overwhelming. So the trick is to subdivide the project into smaller components so you can work on each of them independently. When you're doing app development, the first thing, the first thing I like to start with is the databases. You want to create, not the databases, excuse me, the first thing you want to create is the views, the user interface, the screens that people are going to see. Why that? This is non-traditional because in the old days when I was first learning how to develop apps in the 90s, everybody used to talk about developing the object model. This has to do with object-oriented programming and coding. No, the key really is to create the screens, the screens that people will see. So then you can show these screens to your clients and they can go yes, no, yes, no in terms of what they're going to see in their app. This applies to you as well as the client. You could be the client. It could be your own project where it's going to help you to really visualize the feature set of your app, of your game, of your software, whether it be a website, it could be a mobile app, it could be any type of app really. What you want to do is first develop the screens. And you can do it real quick. You just take out a pen and paper, start writing out different things. Okay, we're going to have, I'll use a website as an example. So you got the home page, you can have the product detail, product pages, the product details pages, you got the shopping, you get the idea. Just write it out quickly and just draw it out on paper even. You know, you might even take notes in, uh, in a Word document or a Google Docs. Just write out home page. What do we have? We're going to have this, this, and this, and this. You know, what buttons you're going to have, what sections within the page you're going to have, so on and so forth. And this is, in a, this is an iter iterative process, meaning you're not going to get it perfect the first time around. You're probably going to have to go through three cycles. You sort of run through it real quickly, sketch out all your pages on paper, as an example, and then you come back to the next day and you, re you revisit it. You look at it again. You start refining. Okay, we want this here. We want this over here. Boom, boom, boom. And then you got the third cycle. You do it again. And that's the best way to start any large project. You start with the screens. Once you have the screens done, that takes like a, that gives you like the blueprint rather. That gives you the blueprint in terms of how you're going to proceed with the development of your app. I like to do after that is then look at the database. If there's going to be a database. 99% of the time there's some sort of database. So if we're talking about an SQL database, in other, wor in other words a relational database, then the next step would be to go to the database and start designing all your tables there. The great thing is that the screens that you just built, all the UI, is going to give you a pretty good idea about what database, what your database structure is going to be like. So you build that out. And then once you have your database, your database and your views, basically the screens, then you can start looking at the code base and how you can, how you can architect that code base. That's why developers have come up with frameworks like MVC frameworks, think, uh, think uh, Laravel for PHP, think Spring for Java, think Django for Python, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They've come up with frameworks because we figured out over the last 20 years the best way to structure most web apps, not all apps, but most apps. And we use something called MVC, Model View Controller. I've talked about that in other videos. And it actually comes from a language called Smalltalk. I think Smalltalk goes back to the 80s. And um, it was a way to divide your app into three basic components. The view, that's the V in model view controller, MVC, that's V for view, that's all your screens. And then you got the model, which is basically your, your database and all your object code, all the code you're actually writing. So if it was a PHP based app with PHP, it would be the PHP. If it was a Java app, it would be all your Java. And then you have the controller, that's the code that that manages the interaction between the views, the, the view of the things that people see, and all the data being stored in the database. Again, this is a very quick overview. It's a vlog, so take it for what it is. So we have a very large project. 
try to chunk it up into different components and then the first thing I would tackle is the screens that people actually see, the views. And that's a great starting point. Hope that helps. Ciao, ciao.